Hello everyone, my name is Humberto Martinez and I'm a high school student from Fire Branch High School. Today, I'll specifically be focusing on exploring the use of transfer learning for the automated detection of Gibbon calls from passive acoustic monitoring data. Passive acoustic monitoring, or PAM for short, is a powerful tool that allows us to collect data at scales that surpass human observation alone. PAM involves monitoring wildlife using recorders. After collection, the recorders are processed to gather wildlife data, usually in the form of vocalizations. However, PAM often generates terabytes of data, making it impractical for human observers alone. Automated detection involves the detection and recognition of sound using machine learning algorithms to significantly reduce the time required compared to manual analysis. When using an automated detection algorithm, we divide the data into training, validation, and test data sets. Research has emerged on using transfer learning in automated detection approaches. For clarification, transfer learning is commonly defined as the reuse of a pre-trained model on a new data set. In this study, we compared BirdNet transfer learning to other commonly employed transfer learning architectures for the automated detection of Gibbon calls. The BirdNet transfer learning was done in Python, while the rest of the analyses were done in the Torch for R ecosystem. Also, it's important to note that BirdNet is trained using bird vocalizations, while the other architectures use images from the ImageNet dataset. Our study specifically focuses on the great calls produced by female northern gray gibbons from a canopy bridge in the Maliao Basin Conservation Area, Sabah, Malaysia. The training and validation dataset came from manually annotated data from the Danum Valley, which was the best practice for evaluating the model performance. The test data is from the Maliao Basin Conservation Area. We chose gibbons for our study because gibbons produce elaborate long calls which make them a particularly useful model for PAM. Automated detection using gibbons has been done before. Klink and her colleagues use a traditional machine learning approach and have achieved an F1 score of approximately 0.8. An F1 score is a harmonic mean of precision and recall. Precision shows how often a machine learning model is correct when predicting the target class. Recall shows whether a machine learning model can find all objects of the target class. The F1 score is measured from 0 to 1, and the closer it is to 1, the more accurate the algorithm is. A high F1 score is essential because it reflects a good balance between precision and recall. This is particularly important when dealing with imbalanced datasets or when both false positives and false negatives are critical. On a different note, automated detection using gibbons and a deep learning approach has also been done before. DeFork and their colleagues were the first to do this and achieved an F1 score of approximately 0.9. Here is the canopy bridge where the recordings were completed. And here is a spectrogram of a female gibbon call. The x-axis is time, the y-axis is frequency, and color corresponds to frequency or pitch. For our study, we broadcasted calls using a playback speaker and re-recorded using Swift Autonomous Recording Units. We placed the recording units at varying distances from approximately 0 meters to 400 meters from the tree and recorded every hour over two days. Then, we compared BirdNet transfer learning to other transfer learning models such as AlexNet, VGG19, and ResNet152. These are commonly used transfer learning architectures that vary in depth and complexity. We compared the performance using a different number of epochs, which is one complete pass of the entire training dataset through the neural network during training. Here, we can see that the maximum F1 scores for VGG16 and VGG19 are closer to 1 at close distances, but BirdNet surpasses their performance at further distances with a maximum F1 score of 0.75, while the other architectures average about an F1 score of 0 to 0.15 at further distances. We also found that the number of epochs can influence how much the model learns from the data. Generally speaking, if we train a new model with transfer learning, we need fewer epochs. Too many epochs can influence overfitting, which is when a model does a good performance on training and or validation data, but poor performance on the test data. We can see that for VGG19, it appears that 20 epochs can lead to overfitting. We also found that distance was a good proxy for the signal-to-noise ratio of the re-recorded calls and that BirdNet outperformed the other models, particularly at further distances slash lower signal-to-noise ratio. The use of automated detection can help us further our understanding of glib and vocal communication and population dynamics. Additionally, the ability to apply complex machine learning algorithms has become more accessible, particularly for non-coders with the emergence of BirdNet's graphical user interface. It can lead to the encouragement of using PAM for bioacoustics research. Here's a link to the BirdNet Analyzer GitHub if you would like to learn more about BirdNet yourself. Before I conclude, I would like to thank the Copular program specifically for providing me with this research opportunity. Moreover, I would also like to thank Hope Cross Jaya and Jin Sum Kim for all your help and assistance during the summer and this semester. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at the email address listed on the screen. Thank you all for your time.